What's up divas? What's up divos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is, what day it is, okay? So actually it's really Tuesday, but you know what the deal is. By the time you see this, it will be a Wednesday, which means it's Real Talk Wednesdays, you guys. So I know y'all see something totally different in the picture, which is this bun on my head. Let me tell y'all something. Last night, I decided to wash my hair, okay? I was bored. It was time I got around to it. I try to put it off as much as possible because I just hate the whole entire task of doing hair in general. And I know you guys are like, girl, you always got on a wig or something. We can't believe you don't like how to do hair. I really don't like to deal with my own hair too much. Um, I just find like putting on a wig is like the easiest thing in the world. And I try to just keep it easy, easy breezy cover girl. You know what I'm saying? So I decided last night, April, take your little koopy top head thing off that you always got wrapped up. I don't even know why I just called it that. But wash your hair. So I did that and I let it air dry. And I really did not feel like corn rolling it, corn braiding it last night. So, and because it's so freaking hot outside, a girl was like, we just gonna do ourselves a bun. Now, this bun is actually a drawstring ponytail, okay? That I have for many of a years. And I don't know why I never did this. Instead, I would always just like freaking take weaving hair and wrap it up, which was such a task. When I could have just took the drawstring ponytail and did all of this. It's curly, the texture matches my hair, but I don't know if I told you guys before, <laughs> you know what I have. I don't really like to wear a ponytail or bun sometimes because I just feel like I got this long head. Like, <sighs> maybe it's just me. Maybe it's where I place the bun on top of my head. Like, I cannot wear a bun all the way right here in the middle of my head. Because I look like a fucking idiot. So I had to kind of, like, push it back a little bit. Because I just can't do the bun right on top of my head. So I think that where I have it right now is kind of decent. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like, girl, you might have to, um... Puff it down a little bit. You don't want it too big because your head is already long. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how I feel about the whole bun thing. But that is the look that I got going on today. Very different, right? Like, nothing different. Like, I really didn't do shit. I did do some of my makeup, like the eyeliner in... Oh, uh, yeah. Just the eyeliner. And I just hooked up my brows a little bit. I didn't get them cut yet. I know y'all bitches is like, well, when you gonna go, girl? Because you really need to. Trust me, I will, a bitch will get there. I was thinking maybe next month on my birthday. I don't know. I'm, do you ever have that moment when you guys are like, when you ladies are just like, you're not in the mood. Like, it's just like so much sometimes for us to keep up with all these these beauty regimens and things that we need to do to ourselves to make our beauty feel enhanced or just feel better about ourselves or et cetera, et cetera. Are there some days that you guys feel like you don't feel like doing your makeup or your hair or putting on your waist trainer or your girdle or getting super duper dressed or wear heels? Do you ever have those freaking moments? Because I've been having those kind of moments a lot lately, like for the past couple of months. And... I don't know if it's because I'm just like worn the fuck out with all of this beauty shit. But sometimes I just be feeling like, you know what? I have to just sit back and be who the fuck I am. I cannot always be glamorous with glamorous wigs on and shit. I just need time to just fucking chill and motherfucking relax. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I go outside with my head wrap on or I go outside without my makeup on or I go outside with my 99 cents flip, flip flops on. I don't really care because I need to feel like this is who the fuck I am in reality. This is how I look when I wake the fuck up. This is who I like to be. This is what makes me April feel comfortable so I have been having those moments a lot lately to where I'm not really trying to impress no fucking body 
because I'm just not in that impressing mood. And besides that, like, I don't feel like I should have to continuously impress people. Like, if you don't take me for who the fuck I am, then listen, I don't know what to tell you. Honestly. So here it is. I'm sitting here with my favorite t-shirt on that I've had for like 11 years probably now. And all of my kids tell me, get rid of it, get rid of it. But I have to constantly, continuously tell them that wearing this shirt makes me feel happy. You know what I'm saying? It puts me in my happy place. It gives me good vibes and such. And a bitch should have wore this shirt this past Saturday when I was trying to do videos because it took me like damn near three hours to do my fucking makeup. And by the time I was done, I had just lost all my vibes and all my mood. But I decided, you know what, April, just do it anyway because this is what you like to do. I tried. I tried so hard to do that. You know what I'm saying? And when the wig would not work with me, I just kind of like had a fit on camera and tossed it off my head and tried another wig. And that still didn't work. I guess my whole feng shui was down. And instead of me wearing bright colors that day, I should have just put this shirt on because I would have felt a whole lot better. And I wouldn't have allowed those fucking synthetic wigs to get to me. But instead, what did a bitch do or not do? I didn't do no videos. Okay, I was so happy and proud of myself because I had not done any videos on the weekend. Normally, that is what I cloud my whole first half of a Saturday with is doing videos. I try to do at least like six of them in one day, but I decided I'm not even going to fuck with it. I'm going to just leave it the fuck alone and go about my business because I am not about to let this consume my goddamn day. And I went to Sam's Club and I enjoyed my goddamn day. True indeed, I might have felt a little bit fucking guilty about it. But I get in those moods where I'm just not into it. Um, and if I'm not into it, then it's always going to show on camera. So the best thing for me to do is to step the fuck away. And that's what I did, okay? Um, there were so many other things that I could have done that day. I said, you know what, I could just go and do um, my swimsuit try on haul. Because I don't really have to do much but just walk in front of the fucking camera. But then I was like, no, bitch, because I don't really feel like taking my clothes on and off. I don't feel like doing that. So we just going to just chill the fuck out. And we're not going to do shit today. Yes. Now, on another note, I have been dieting, not even dieting. A bitch would be lying. Okay, so I have gone back to my walking because my knees started acting up. But, you know, you guys have been asking me how I lost all this weight and etc. And I did explain that to you guys last week with these hydroxy cuts. But I do have a little other couple things that I have been doing. Not really doing, but because let me tell y'all something. I don't really try to get in the habit of... Or the trends and things because if I'm not comfortable wearing something, I am not about to continuously wear that shit and feel uncomfortable, okay? I know everybody be like, ooh, we're going to waist train, we're going to get this waist train, we're going to do this. And I really have good intentions on doing those type of things, you know what I'm saying? And I have been, um, I have my waist trainer that I absolutely love. I don't know if you really want to call it a waist trainer. Oh, man. I don't know if you want to actually call it a waist trainer, but I showed you this this waist trainer in a video real talk video like months ago because I stay wearing it like I really did like it and it, it really did give me a shape and I wore it every day so continuously and I was so proud of myself it wasn't as tight as normal waist trainers so it made it more comfortable for me and it did really bring it in a little bit and it helped but the one thing I liked about it the most was it has a zipper on it okay so it had a zipper on it. I was sent it from a seller on Amazon and I really did enjoy it. But of course I did lose weight so it's not, it doesn't fit the same anymore. You know. I did have good intentions on going to their website and just purchasing me another one on my own. And instead of me having to do that, I was contacted by another seller called Girl Melody. And they have excellent shapers. They have new shapewear, whatever you want to call it. They have all of those body waist trainers. And I was like, you know what? This came at the right time because I really want a new one. I would like to get a new one. I'm not trying to be like no Instagram model. You know what I'm saying? 
um, though it would be nice, but I don't really think that's ever going to happen to me because with that being said, I'm going to have to get some plastic surgery too, you know, because that's what they do. They enhance their body features, their boobs, their ass, their assets, the, whatever you want to call it, that's what they do. So I don't really have the funds to go do that, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I don't really think I would want to. The only thing that I would probably want to change is my eyes because they're so hooded. And I think that over time, because I am getting older, they're getting more hooded. So that would be the only thing that I would worry about because a bitch need to put on her eyeshadow. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing I would really worry about. But anyway, so I was going to go and get a new waist trainer. But I was contacted by Girl Melody, which is another um, waist train distributor. Now, it didn't come from Amazon, so I would be lying. Um, I'm thinking that it did for some reason, but it actually doesn't. It comes from China because it was sent to me DHL. Let me tell y'all this, okay? I have been wearing this waist trainer for a week and a half now, every day, continuously. And I'm so damn proud of myself because I never really allow anything to consume my time so fucking much, okay? In actual reality I just don't um, I really don't feel the need to and when I first got it in the mail you know they were so kind they helped me pick the right correct size etc etc when I first got it I was like oh shit this is not gonna fit around a bitch I'm not trying to wear this and it was a struggle to put it on trust and believe it was a struggle and I've had several other waist trainers I have one from the corset company I do believe it's called and that one was really great only had two rows of hooks however the torso of it was so long, like entirely long for my body that it was digging right here into me. Like when I would put this waist trainer on, it would sit here and it would dig into my skin and I just couldn't wear it anymore. It was, it was comfortable in the beginning, but I just couldn't wear it anymore. And I just kind of like tossed it aside. And that's when I started wearing the one with the zipper. So this one, this one right here, it doesn't have a zipper, it has three hooks, and they have like this huge variety of them, okay? Colors, styles, every single thing, and I'm like so amused by it. Not even amused, but totally, totally like loving this whole entire thing. So I have it on now, and I have, the first day that I wore it, I was so pleasantly shocked with myself because I wore it for nine hours straight. A girl was like, oh, snap a duty. Did I really wear this after nine hours? By the time I took it off, it was time to take a shower. I wasn't about to sleep in it like some people do because listen, when it's time to rest, it's time to rest. And that's just point blank period. It's time to go to sleep and rest. Relax is the key. I've been wearing this thing every single day since I have received it, and let me tell y'all, I wish you could see me in my tank top, and I should just change for you guys, but listen, this thing, now this is, this is me, of course, with it on, and it comes right here, and oh, I love it, it's just like long right here, and it actually does help, it's on the first row, so let's not be catty, of course. And it's a size 1X. I have a 1X on, and I absolutely find it to be so freaking comfortable. Yes. So comfortable. Now, I'm not trying to get, like, an hourglass figure, though it would be nice to have one. But I'm just trying to lose a little weight. Okay. So, yes, I'm going to do a more detailed video with it, but I just wanted to share that with you guys real quick. I will do a more detailed video with it, showing you the before and after, because I probably feel like that would be more beneficial to you guys, so you can see what it looks like before I put it on in a certain dress or a shirt versus after, because this one is kind of loose and you really can't tell. But yeah, so that is what I have been doing, and I'm so happy because I don't never really stick to something for too long because I just don't like to be uncomfortable and I don't like to be like just uncomfortable. I don't, I don't go for that uncomfortable shit. If I'm not comfortable with something, I am not about to wear it. I don't give a fuck what results it give your ass. If I'm not comfortable, I'm not gonna wear it. 
So anyway, that is what I have been doing also. Now, let me say, I want to say thank you to four special people because I did go to my post office box yesterday, which was Monday, and I did get some Mother's Day cards, except for one of them was not sent to my post office box, and that's my best friend, Shay. A girl does have more than one best friend. I do have two of them, and she sent me a Mother's Day card. It was so sweet because it just, I don't know, I just thought it was so sweet. You know, that's my friend, and she didn't have to do that because we speak to each other quite frequently and just to get a card in the mail is a surprise I was like girl why you ain't tell me you did that so I felt like really horrible and terrible because I didn't send her a Mother's Day card like I wish she wouldn't have did that she did not have to do that but you know what those are the type of people that always think about people like herself and it's so weird because she and I are both the same sign we are Gemini's and sometimes we get very moody where we don't want to be bothered with people I don't know about her but a bitch be feeling like that okay me but I just want to tell her I love you and thank you so much for this it sits right here on my desk and I thought it was cute little owls and stuff you know what I'm saying so it is what it is uh, also, I did get some more Mother's Day cards uh, yesterday. Look at this one. You are a wonderful mom. It's all glittery and sparkly and stuff. And there is a message in here. I don't really think that... Um, well, it just says, I'm truly glad that I found your channel. You're a great mother from what I see. And I love the real talks and hauls with Mumsy and Wig videos. But on the real, I watch you and a lot of what you ha said has happened to me. So I'm like really like, oh, thank you. So this is from D Haven. Uh, she sent me this Mother's Day card and I was like, I have like all these Mother's Day cards from people that I have never even met in person and it just is like amazing. So I have decided to make like this keepsake box of like all of my special cards and letters that I get from everyone because I just like to keep stuff like that. I think it's important. Maybe not to everybody, but to me, I find it to be really important and it also makes me feel good. You know what I'm saying? Because I know one day I'm going to be really super fucking old. You know what I'm saying? Like in my 80s or whatever. And I like to go back and read stuff, you know? So I could just look at it and read it and be like, damn, I remember back then. I remember this. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Also, I did get one from the Lewis family, Jennifer Lewis. She also sent me a Mother's Day card. And what was so crazy is this is the second one that I have that is ident there I have two of these now and one of them is actually in my display case my first one so I have another Mother's Day card with Wonder Woman on it OMG you guys holds up I have to actually change my shirt real quick because I do have a special shirt that I want to put on for today so I'm going to pause this for one second after I say thank you to Jennifer because this is also another Mother's Day card. And you guys know Wonder Woman is my favorite. And I don't even know how I forgot to not put this shirt on because I guess, I honestly, I was feeling some type of way today. I really wasn't in the mood for anything, and I know that this shirt makes me feel good. But I'm pretty sure that this shirt I'm about to put on is about to make me feel really good. So hold on. Okay, so now that I am in my element, here is my new shirt. I think this is going to be like my new feng shui shirt, you know, that makes me feel good because I'm feeling it. The smell so good. It's one of my favorite characters. This is something different that I ain't ever seen, but one of my divas here, and you don't stop, that is her username. She sent this to me. She always emails me. She always writes me. Um, I texted her and told her thank you and stuff. But yes, yeah, so she sent this to me in my post office box, and this is so freaking cool. Okay, look at this. I am not a normal woman. I'm a Wonder Woman. And do you see the Wonder Woman? She is an African-American Wonder Woman. I, I love it because it's pink, and she must know I hate the, um, the shirts with the stuff all on my neck because I will cut them open. So I really do prefer like a V-neck shirt because it allows my neck to breathe. But I absolutely love this. It's my favorite color. So, and it smells so good. I cannot remember what perfume she sprayed on this. But when I took it out the package, I was like, OMG, this smells so damn fucking good. 
okay? So I was waiting for today to finally get to wear it because I didn't want to wear it out and just like ruin it and then I and then it's dirty and I wouldn't be able to wear it today. And then look, I forgot to totally put it on. But thank goodness that I remember so I ain't getting that bad in my old age. So yes, Diva, thank you so much because a girl is loving this. So y'all will see me wearing this in a couple of wig videos to come because now that I have worn it here, I'm going to wear it again. Okay? That's just what the fuck I do. Now, to so my last card, thank you to Roxy, who... Oh, shit. Okay, does this bitch live, like, around the corner for me? So, Roxy, you live over here. I know exactly where you live at, girl. Ooh, I'm gonna come knock on your damn door. So Roxy lives over here by me. That is so funny. And she sent me this really nice card. And she wrote a letter in it and everything. And it's just a Mother's Day card. And I was just like so happy to get this. But I never even looked at the return address on the envelope to know that she lives right here in Arizona. Okay? That's just so weird because... I don't know what she looks like, but then what if I'm out in public and then she sees me and then I know and she knows what I look like and then she's like, I'm Roxy and I'll be like, what? Like, that's crazy. So I want to tell her thank you as well because this was so sweet. It's weird because she live right here. Oh, but she does have a YouTube channel. So look, let's let us look it up. A girl going to look that up and see. So that way when I see her in public, I will know what she look like. You know what I'm saying? But I want to say thank you to everyone for my Mother's Day cards. I have never gotten so many Mother's Day cards in my life. It's crazy. It is crazy. I'm always getting Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman. So, yes, yeah, so I want to thank everybody for that. Other than that, there's really nothing spectacular that has been going on in my life. Like, seriously, um, I don't really know. Like, yeah. Yesterday I had one of those lazy moments and I felt so bad about it because I, I dropped Mumsy off to school at 8 o'clock and then came home and went back to sleep until 10.30 in the morning. Like, who does that? Like, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person that did that, but I never go back to sleep. I never take a nap. I was so disgusted with myself, but I was so tired and I never stay, I never sleep in. I never do. And then I got up and I washed and I did what I was supposed to do. And by like 1.30, I was back laying on my bed taking a nap before I had to get mumsy before school. Like, I was really kind of disappointed with myself. And then I went to bed early. Like, I guess my body was just so tired. I was really tired. I, like I said, I don't go to bed until like 2 in the morning, 2, 2.30 in the morning. Then I wake up at like 7.15. So I really don't get as much sleep as I should. So I guess it probably finally got caught up to me. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So yes, you guys, let's get on to this real talk. If you have a real talk that you want to talk about, uh, life situation, you need some advice, you just want to talk about somebody that you just can't motherfucking stand, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, and just keep in mind if it's really urgent, like, bitch, don't put fucking urgent if it ain't urgent, but if it's super duper urgent... Just put that shit in a real in the subject line along with real talk so that I can get to it as soon as possible. But yes, if you guys want to dish it out, let's fucking dish shit the fuck out. Hey April, I love your channel and being a New Yorker, I can relate to you all day. Your videos make my day. I'm writing to ask, what would you do? I have been with my husband since I was 18. We have two children together and have been together for 20 years. I'm 38, he's 41. With all that time invested, of course people have rocky situations when you're coming up that many years of being together. He had a lot of infidelity issues and I ain't gonna lie, but a bitch got tired of sitting back and just eating that shit. So yeah, I ain't been no saint either, but I had had enough and finally left for two months. He begged and pleaded for me to come back and I can't front after a while he wore me down. When you've been with someone that many years, they learn how to work your emotions. It's just part of the way shit goes. So I came home and we was good. We was all good. So one night, I don't know why I checked. I guess old habits die hard. Mind you, I had only been back home about two weeks. And I find a sexual video of him sleeping with some woman that is total trash. And who I humiliated for trying to get at him before. 
I couldn't believe my eyes, but the crazy shit is I wasn't hurt. I wasn't bothered, bugged out. It's like I was already prepared. Now I'm at a loss for what move I make now. Granted, I kind of have become numb to his bullshit and being the fact that I get whatever I want, such as cars, gifts, money, basically whatever I ask for, never had a worry financially. So I take everything, fuck that. But is it really worth it? So she didn't leave us a name. So we just gonna call her Hilda. I just couldn't think of anything because it says real talk, please keep my name private. Thank you. So we're gonna call her Hilda. So, Hilda has been with her husband for 18 years, right? Or yeah, damn, damn near um, 20 years. They've been together for 20 years. Since she was 18, He's she's now 38, he's 41. And basically, he has had his moments of fucking other bitches, oh hey? Let's just put it out there like that. Infidelity is a nice word to put it, but we just gonna be blunt. The nigga has had his share of fucking bitches. And Hilda has sat around and taken that shit. So I guess she finally got tired of it and decided she about to leave the nigga. Just like leave, get the fuck away from him, okay? I could totally relate to that shit too. But she gonna say this, she ain't no saint neither. Now, the reason why I'm probably... Figuring out why she ain't no saint is because she got tired of taking this shit. So it's basically, um, you know, she it was her way of getting back with him because she just couldn't take it no more. So if the nigga's gonna do it, why not I do it too? You know what I'm saying? If he gonna do the shit, then I'm gonna do the shit too. N um, what do you call that? Um, tap for tap or whatever. I don't know what it's called. Um, but either way, she did the shit because he did it. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to do it, I'm going to do it too. And two wrongs don't make a right. That's just obvious. That's in general. Even if somebody does some shit to you that's real shady and grimy, you don't have to do the same shit back to them. Or you don't have to do anything back to them in general. It's called karma. You know what I'm saying? They're going to reap what the fuck they sow. Whether you do something to them or the elements in the universe do something to them. Either way, that shit is going to finally come back around and nip they asses in the bud like really nip they ass okay but it's a tick for tat is what she was doing basically that's what i'm getting out of it that she was basically on some tick for tack shit but so she left she left the nigga for two months okay good for her i think i would have left too because i would have got tired of it and then after a while like you just get tired of it like i have been through that shit before it hasn't to do with fidelity it wasn't anything like that the nigga wasn't fucking bitches on me but i just got tired of it because you're gonna constantly keep drinking and drinking and drinking so i'm really sick and tired of this shit like you always talk about i'm not drink i'm not drink i'm not drink but you just keep drinking so a bitch do get tired of that shit and after a while it's like you know what i'm gonna have to leave you the fuck alone because you work in my nerves man you work my nerves so she left him the fuck alone and she does have a good point if you've been with somebody for so long they know the heartstrings to pull they know how to get back in your good graces and it's kind of fucked up because it is the truth and that is reality and i've been there so she did go back after her husband begged and pleaded and i'm gonna be honest and tell you much this much it do feel good to have a motherfucker beg and plead and worship you okay however nigga you're gonna need to do that on a daily motherfucking basis like let's not get it fucked up don't think that you could do this shit whenever it's convenient to you or when the stakes are at odd like you know what I'm saying you have to do the shit because you know in the end if you don't do the shit you're gonna be really fucked up in the end so i'm really gonna need you to fucking worship me and beg and plead on at least a weekly motherfucking basis but anyway, she came back home after the two months after he begged and pleaded her. And she was home probably for not even two weeks. And did she find a video recording on her husband's phone of him fucking some other bitch? Some female that Hilda then humiliated and went off on because she was already trying to get at her husband. But her husband went and fucked the bitch and recorded the shit like... Who the fuck does that? That's like, that has to be like the lowest of the fucking low, okay? Could you imagine, like, you seen some female, you know this female is trying to get with your man. She know all about you, but she really don't give a fuck. And she's still trying to get with your man. And you got to put the bitch in your place. Then to turn around and see on your man's phone a video or even a picture of him fucking her or her on the phone. Like, hold the fuck up. You just made me look like a total fucking asshole. So in my eyes, I'm feeling like Hilda's husband just made her look like a fucking dumbass. This is how I feel. Like, this is how I would feel as a person. Like, so, 
I just went off on this bitch and said all of this shit to her and did all of this shit to her and humiliated her, ridiculed her and spazzed the fuck off. Or so I thought I spazzed the fuck off. And so I thought that I humiliated this bitch. But in reality, she and you are plotting to fuck with each other. Like, so y'all got me in the middle looking like a fucking jackass, like a jack the fuck ass. Okay, so when she found this on her husband's phone, it didn't even bother her. You know what I'm saying? She didn't flip out. She didn't bug out. It didn't even bother her. She's now trying to figure out what the fuck to do next. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I can totally relate to that shit. Yeah, you are numb. It's because you know why you're numb? It's because you're tired of it. You don't give a fuck anymore. And when you get to that point in a relationship when you don't give a fuck anymore about the shit that the person is putting you through, that means that you're done and over. There's really not no kind of love there. There's nothing to mend. There's nothing to bring back together. You're only there for certain reasons. And that's the fucked up feeling, but that's the truth. That's what it is. If it really did bother you, and if you really was hurt, and you really felt some type of way about your husband still, then it would have really actually bothered you. But because the fact that you don't even give a fuck, and it's not even bothering you, it's because you're used to it, and you're numb. Now, let me tell you this much. I wouldn't give a fuck if you gave me heaven and earth you're not about to sit here on any type of social media in life phone calls pictures video whatever and humiliate me because that's what the fuck your husband just did he fucking humiliated you and to have the fucking audacity to fucking record that shit on his phone is basically him telling you to kiss his motherfucking ass and that bitch is basically saying yes bitch no matter what the fuck you done said i still got this nigga here's the thing sweetheart you can take it for what it's worth for me, but me personally, I would be right there getting my fucking divorce papers done and all the shit that I can from him. Meaning whatever the fuck this nigga got to give, he about to give it all to me. If I leave this fucking marriage with 110% of all the shit, best believe a bitch gonna leave with 150%. Okay, because I'm gonna leave with more than what I came and I'm gonna leave with more than he got. Meaning he gonna give me everything he got and then he gonna give me some more shit when he gets some more shit. That's what the fuck a bitch like me would do. All right. You ain't got to spaz out. You ain't got to humiliate nobody and ridicule nobody no more because you know why? You done already done did that. You done already done did that. And it seems like no matter how many times you done did that, it ain't working out in your favor. So why continue to take that route? It's time to take the next step. Now, what I would do, if you have not already said anything to him about the video, bitch, forward that shit to yourself. Okay. So when you in court... And you getting him for everything the fuck he got. And he tries to deny any of that shit. Listen. Listen, honey. I would definitely be like, oh, your honor. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. When niggas fuck nasty bitches. Okay? When niggas fuck nasty bitches. That's what the fuck it is. You don't even have to go out your way and see that woman out in the street humiliate her anymore ridicule her or try to fight her or any of that sometimes you just gotta leave shit the fuck alone because you know something if it was meant for you to have bitch you would fucking have it but obviously your husband's dick is meant for everybody else to have not just you so regardless of how long y'all been together it feel like sometimes it feel like i know for me when i got divorced i was with my husband for 17 years altogether it felt like a betrayal kind of to me because like i had put all this time and effort into being with a person and for us to have to separate like this and divorce because of your your drinking and shit it was it was like a betrayal to me okay when you put time and effort into a relationship, regardless if you're married or not, and you put so much time into it, it's like, did I just waste all these years? Nobody really wants to waste time. Nobody really wants to waste years. And nobody really wants to feel like we've wasted time. And so, to me, I felt like, damn, I wasted 17 Eight, 17 years of my life with this person. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get married with somebody, you really feel like, <coughs> or, or rather... Excuse me. You don't even feel like you want to 
be with the person for the rest of your life because like why would you marry somebody just to be married to them for only like you don't plan that shit like oh yeah i'm gonna marry him for just 20 years and then i'm gonna go about my business like nobody even fucking does shit like that or even thinks about shit like that so when you get into a relationship with somebody and you get married to them your intentions are to be with them forever like that is the whole fucking point you know what i'm saying but then when they start stepping out and stepping out continuously it's like nigga you really don't value me fuck the vows you don't value me as a human being you know what I'm saying? A lot of people be like, for better or for worse, listen, if you don't get the fuck out of my face, it's going to get real worse. So I best, for your betterness, get out of my face, okay, before it get real worse. It's, and, and yeah, a lot of people be like, oh, for better, for worse, I'm going to be with them. So you're going to be with that person for better, for worse. He's going to drag you in the mud and you're going to still be with him because it says for better or for worse. Bitch, you crazy. I am not about to let nobody fucking drag me through no bullshit because of something what a book says, a vow says. Like, no. Because if they really took it seriously like that, then they wouldn't have even been going there with the bullshit. So, my thing, Hilda, hmm, I would be seeking out some type of lawyer, legal device, a legal advice, and getting my shit all together all my ducks in a row and the first thing that i would do is i would leave i would just leave i wouldn't i wouldn't even put up a fight i wouldn't even put up an argument i would just basically fucking leave you know what i'm saying life is very short very short-lived life is very very short and i'm sorry but i'm not about to let no motherfucking body i don't give a shit who you are i'm not about to let anybody ruin my fucking short-term life a lot of people may think i'm bugging when i say it's short term because it's short Regardless of how long you live to 100, it's still short because life exists for, life just continues to go on and go on and on. So you're only here for that certain amount of time and then it just continues to evolve. And I wish I could be here, well, yeah, I would like to be here for all eternity, you know what I'm saying? Because I like to see things change or whatever, but we are not. We're not set up like that. So life is short. And so because our lives are short, do you really think that I'm going to allow you some fucked up individual to fuck it up for me and makes part of my life miserable. For 20 years, you've been with this asshole who not 20 years has made you miserable, but 20 years you have been with him. And some of that time frame, he has made you miserable. Like, I'm not about to let anybody make me miserable anymore. That I'm not about to do. If you about to make me miserable, goodbye. Bye, Felicia. I don't give a fuck if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're a dog or a cat. You ain't about to make my lifespan fucking miserable. You crazy. I will cut you off in a heartbeat and not even deal with you no more, okay? Because I'm about to enjoy the shit that I got left. And I'm going to enjoy it without you breathing down my motherfucking back and pissing me the fuck off. So, therefore, first thing I would do is pack my shit up and get the fuck out. For real. And change your number. Or don't even change your number. Block your motherfucking number. Really, I would change that shit. I would change my motherfucking number because you can block them, but he could call you from a whole bunch of different numbers. So what I would do is I would change my shit. I would definitely change my number and I would only give it to people that are trustworthy enough because I'm not about to be aggravated. And then the next time he would hear from me and see me is when I'm up in the courthouse taking you for every motherfucking thing you got. And then you can keep that video because that's the only thing you're going to have left after the time I'm finished with you. Meaning, nigga, I'm going to take everything and the only thing you're going to have left is that video on your phone. Hopefully, you can sell that shit and get on World Star Hip Hop and make a couple of dollars, which will make you holler. Other than that, you're going to leave out of this relationship with nada. That's just my advice. So, yes, let um, Hilda know how you would handle this one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, so while I'm sitting here, I am so hungry right now. And I'm feeling like this motherfucking waist trainer is making me sick to my stomach because I'm so hungry. Like, I feel like I, I have not eaten anything today. And it's still early. It's 10.50 in the morning. And I'm hungry. Okay, so... Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Hey, April. I just want to start off by saying I love your show. I'm always playing them in the background while handling household chores or while I'm relaxing. I love, I love all of your advice and in hopes that maybe you can give me some real good one on how to handle this situation. This situation me and my baby daddy been dealing with. 
I have changed our name, so you can call me Kathy and my baby daddy is Robbie. Just to paint a picture where we, I was at, I was 17 and he was 18 when we met. Now I'm 21, he's 22, and we have a beautiful one-year-old son and another son on the way. So we've been together for three years now. It wasn't the easiest three years, but we managed to get through some bumps. Now the situation is that from the moment we got together, I've always lied about stupid stuff, which at the time it seemed like a big deal to me. He would ask me my body count and about past relationships and the people I've been with. And because I knew that throughout my middle school and high school, looking back, I consider myself a little fast. Because of this, I didn't want him judging me or looking at me different for the things I've done, even though I've never engaged in anything major like a threesome or anything crazy. I lied and said I've only had three sexual partners. Who was I kidding? And even got to the point where we had a mutual friend that I didn't even know my, ba my baby daddy knew until he asked if I knew him. And I just lied and said I didn't because I was embarrassed due to the fact that not only did I know this guy, but we had hooked up in high school. It got to a point where my baby daddy confronted the guy and asked if he knew me. And he said, yeah. Long story short, I ended up beating the guy's ass because I was just so mad and embarrassed. But I did it all to myself. I'm such a dumb ass. Anyways, the lies continued for a while, but I got to the point where I knew he loved me because he still stayed and just put up with it. This is literally the only thing in our relationship that has been an ongoing problem. It's to the point where even though I've been honest about everything, I find him going through my phone at night, logging onto my Facebook, and going through my old ass messages just to stir up old shit and ask me about it or get mad because of the way I would talk to guys. This fool has gone through my messages countless of times and never fails to come up with new things to come at me with and it's getting very annoying and tiring especially right now I'm eight months pregnant and I'm already dealing with family issues and he's all I have and every time he starts drama with me I get very down and start feeling alone you wouldn't believe half the stuff we've been going through together and the fact that I have two kids with him I feel like he still doesn't see how much I love him and in my opinion he's still stuck on just unnecessary bullshit but I can also understand that a lie is a lie but I just want to get over this because I feel like it's what's holding him back on just loving me fully. I know he has some insecurities too, but he won't admit to them, but I know he has them. I just want to know what I can say or do to get past this issue we are we're going through. Hope you reach back out because I really appreciate it. Sometimes help from a stranger is a way, a, a way is way better than getting advice from family members, even though I consider you like a virtual auntie to me. Much love, Kathy. Well, first of all, Kathy, don't let nobody stress you out being pregnant because being pregnant is supposed to be a happy time in your life. However, I can totally understand. Sometimes um, it's very uncomfortable situation when a man will ask you how many people you have slept with in your past. I have lied about it as well. Um, my body count ain't nobody's fucking business but mine. Okay, as long as I ain't giving you no fucking venereal disease or any long-term disease, why the fuck is it your business? Okay, and what a guy will tell you is, well, I just want to know because I don't want to be embarrassed or be outside somewhere in public and this is who I see because you mess with this person or you mess with that person. Nigga, you just want to be in my fucking business. That's what the fuck it is you want to be in. I've had to ask, I've been asked that question question uh in the last relationship from that dude that i put out okay yeah put his ass the fuck out it's not your business who i slept with in arizona but if you really need to know dude they were much better than your ass in the bed a lot better and bigger so let's not talk about that i'm pretty sure you don't want to go there with me okay and his excuse was well i don't want to be out in public and i see them and then i'm embarrassed like no dude you should just be embarrassed at the fact that you can't fuck and your dick is little let's just keep it real that's what the fuck you should be embarrassed about don't worry about the next man and what the fuck they did and you couldn't and, do, and would never do and you could never do let's not be embarrassed by their presence Let's just be embarrassed that you are a lazy fuck that can't fuck with a little dick and you're really a nobody, okay? And yes, if you're watching this, Jamel, you know I'm talking about you. Ooh, 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 ooh. But anyway, <laughs> so back at the matter of hand. Um, a lie is a lie. You're right. It is a lie. And I totally understand where she's coming at when she's like she don't want him to judge her because that's what guys do. That's what men do. It could be like this. A woman can have slept with five 
men. And a man could have slept with five women, okay? But when a guy looks at a girl that does that, we are looked at like the heathen of the century, the thought of the century, okay? Whatever you want to look at us as, we're looked at that, and it's not in a good way, okay? So when it's equal amount, it's just like our, our five is now tripled to 15, and his, his shit is still five, like, you know what I'm saying? Our five is now 15, even though it's only five, it's now tripled, okay? So you got me at 15, nigga, and you sitting there at five, because that's how dramatic they can make that's how dramatic they take it they like make it to be that bad and i get it you don't want them to judge you that's the reason why i have lied about it my past like because for one i don't need you judging me and for two i really don't think it's your business okay and for three it's i don't think it's your motherfucking business you worry about the then and now what's going on in this relationship stop worrying about the past because if it was really worth something then it wouldn't be the past i would still be with that person you know what i'm saying but this is the thing. If you guys have been together for three years, it's not really a long time. Three years is not long, um, but it is some time put in. And, okay, so you have feelings about him. Obviously, you do because if you didn't, you wouldn't have two children with this dude, okay? So, it, is, it does become very annoying. And the first thing that I would do, because it's kind of like he's invading your fucking privacy... You need to log out of your Facebook and you need to fucking change your password, okay? Because it's just... It's just too much. Like, I don't I don't really need anybody in my shit reading my messages. I've already been there and done that, too. Like, where I had to read my ex-husband's messages or my ex-boyfriend's messages or they done read mine. Like, dude, it's social media. And, dude, this was before you even came the fuck along. Chill out and stop worrying about it. Like, why are you so insecure that you have to worry about the next man? Like, are you that insecure that you have to worry about somebody else coming through or what somebody else did to me or, you know, ooh. you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, stop worrying about it. No, so the first thing that I would fucking do is I would change my fucking passcodes and I would make sure that I logged out each time on my Facebook to where every time I logged in, every time I wanted to get on, I had to log in. Because then what's going to happen is he's going to be like, why can't I get on your Facebook? Okay, he's probably going to ask you. And then you're going to have to be like, why are you trying to get on my Facebook anyway? That's the first thing that I would do. The second thing that I would do is I would definitely have a sit down with him and let him know. Like, you know, something, dude, we are together. We have a child together and we have one on the way. The way I feel about you is not how I felt about anybody in the past. Because if you did feel that way about someone in the past, then you would be having their babies, not his. Okay? Definitely not in three years. Okay? You've been with somebody for three years and y'all about to have baby number two. To me, that could be fast. To some people, that could be pretty damn fast. Like, damn, they only been together three years and they got two kids together. God damn, that's pretty quick because, you know, you got to be pregnant for nine months. So, so, obviously, the way you feel about dude that you're with now is not how you felt about anybody else. Because if it were, I'm pretty sure you would have had an opportunity to get knocked the fuck up, okay? So, um, fourthly, what you need to do, or thirdly, whatever the number we're fucking on, doesn't really matter. But you need to tell him, listen, the reason why I told you um, that my body count was this amount when it really wasn't is because I was really afraid that you were going to judge me for the person that I'm really um, not. You know, I, I needed you to see me for who I am. I didn't want you to look at a number and feel like this is the type of person I am when it's actually not. You know what I mean? I wanted you to know me and get to know me as a person, not from what I did in my past. You know, a lot of times things like that, like body counts, it kind of does mess up a relationship. If someone has known, like, you know, like, I mean, like, listen, if I was to ask a guy, well, how many bitches you can slap when he and he would have said like 20 or 30, I'd have been like. Damn, nigga, I don't really think I want to fuck with you because it seems like you just was fucking with bitches just to fuck with them. It makes your whole just outlook on a person a lot less when you figure out, like, oh, this is how many person they slept with. And it, your outlook could be totally wrong. You know what I mean? You could be, like, really wrong. People leave relationships for a whole lot of reasons. You know what I'm saying? They're not with another person anymore because for a whole lot of reasons. Like, for one, it just didn't work the fuck out. And why would you want to stay with somebody that just didn't work the fuck out? Like... That's like with me. I have five kids and four baby daddies. A lot of motherfuckers would look at me like, damn, she got a lot of baby fathers. You know what I'm saying? She got five kids and four baby daddies. That's a lot. Yeah, it may just be a lot to some people. 
But why the fuck would I keep having kids with the same motherfucker who did some dumb shit to me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So when you fuck up, what I do, I leave all the time. I don't really put up with too much. You fuck up, and I'm out. I'm not going to stick around for too much longer. I'm not going to stick around to allow you to keep fucking up on me. The only time that I did that was with my marriage. And that's the person that I had two kids with. So it's kind of like the same thing. You know what I mean? We're kind of in the same boat. My ex-husband, he never freaking judged me of how many people that I've slept with. However, he never really knew either because I didn't think it was his business. However, he never asked me either. He never asked me how many people I slept with because he felt like that was the past. And what's the past is the past. And we have some of those people that are mature enough to feel that way. But then we have some that are very insecure about themselves who will ask because they want to know. They need to know everything. Some people feel like it's good to know everything. Some things are best left untouched or not talked about, okay? And so here is your opportunity to sit down and tell him, listen, the reason why I may have told you that my body count was this amount when it's really not is because I didn't need you to judge me. You know what I mean? You may have looked at me differently and you may have definitely looked at me the wrong way when in fact I'm not that type of person. Those were the past. That's the past. We're here together and this is our, the, the present and the future. And this is what I would like to continuously have in my future. You know, so I apologize for lying, but I just really didn't want to be judged. And being judged is a hard thing. You know what I'm saying? Some people may take it as it's really nothing. But me personally, I don't really like people to judge me. I, I really don't. And I don't really like to judge people either. And though I can be the type of person where I could tell you in a minute, like, oh, I don't really care how you feel. Or I don't really care what people say about me. And that's and I say that a lot, but it's not so. That's a lie. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. When I have my whole GoFundMe thing going on, you know what I'm saying? Up for my teeth. I have my GoFundMe account still going on. And I don't want anybody to know about it. I didn't even want to ask anybody to help me get my teeth fixed. You know why? Because even though April always said, I don't really care people judge me. I don't really care what people think. That part of me, sometimes I don't, but there are certain things that I really don't want nobody talking about me. And I really don't want nobody judging me. So, you know what I'm saying? I kind of like shy away from a lot of things. How do you think I felt when that bitch um, texted about my my GoFundMe to my, one of my friends. She says something. That made me feel so humiliated and low. Like, who the fuck are you to be talking about me because I'm asking for help? Okay, just because you see me here on YouTube, don't assume and judge the fact that think that, oh, because I'm on YouTube and I make videos, that I'm like super rich and I'm getting these paychecks because it ain't even like that. I wish I fucking would, okay? I wish I could get a motherfucking paycheck that was like $10,000 a month. Month, okay, my shits be a couple of thousand. All right, I wish I would get a paycheck for ten thousand a month. I've never gotten a paycheck that big ever. I have never gotten a paycheck over two thousand from YouTube. Okay, in a month. So for people to judge you, it's a very hurtful and it's very harsh. And there's some things that we don't like to touch when it comes to being judged. Um, that that goes with certain things like I would really never want anybody to know how many people I slept with and I really don't like to ask for help though I'm the type of person like I say to you guys all the time I don't give a fuck what this person think about me I don't care what none of y'all think about me in reality I really do you know what I'm saying to a certain extent all right so I have pride as well and I like to think of myself as being a person who could do things on their own it's hard for a human being like myself to ask for help and I just don't like to be judged. I, I really don't, okay? So when I say that, oh, I don't care what people think, it's to a certain point, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to say, oh, that bitch, um, she light-skinned and fat, you know, that will hurt me. If you were to say, oh, look at her mouth, her teeth are raggedy, that would really hurt me. That would really, that would really hurt me. That would hurt me to a point where you guys really don't understand. Like, I get like that, where I feel really depressed and I feel alone. So, it all depends on what you're saying about me. You know what I mean? If you were to talk about my teeth, that would hurt me to the point where I probably wouldn't really want to talk about it. You guys never see me smile with my teeth showing. Um, I have edited out quite a few times on Real Talk the side of my mouth. Because I felt like I was ready to show you guys. And then. 
I just couldn't. Like, it was, it took a lot out of me. So I could understand how she feels about it. However, Kathy, this is, a, this is something that you're going to have to talk about with him. And you don't have to divulge your info of how many you slept with. Because the way you're going to talk to him about it, he's going to really understand not to ask you how many people you slept with. But you just basically need to sit there and, and just basically tell him, like, listen, you don't really have to apologize because that's your personal space. And we're all entitled to our personal space. God knows I feel that way. But if it were me, so that way he would stop going through my stuff and stop asking me. I would just basically change my code and um, passwords, and then I would let him know, listen, the reason why I never told you how many people I slept with is because I didn't need you to judge me. And people go off of a lot of things that, you know, they see or hear or from another person, and they just take it as what it is and run with it when they never get a chance to know the person for who they really are. So I really didn't want you to judge me, okay? That is the past. And that's all you have to tell him. And maybe that will help break the monotony and break the ice of how he feels about being so untrustworthy. And for as for his insecurities, he may have some. I mean, I mean everybody has insecurities, okay? That's part of life. You're nobody is um, perfect. Nobody's 100% perfect. So everybody has some insecurities. But me personally, that's how I would handle that shit. And I would just leave it at that. I'm not going to go and continuously go on. I'm not going to allow him to fucking belittle me and drag me through the mud when he's asking me who the fuck I fucked. Like, I'm pretty sure that that nigga ain't tell you how many bitches he fucked. And if he did, I guarantee you that he's not giving you an honest answer. There's a few that are probably left off. Maybe one or two, but it's still a lie. And yes, a lie is a lie. And sometimes when you lie to a person, it makes it harder to believe. Okay, granted, nobody likes to be lied to, so therefore we have to keep that in perspective. If you don't like to be lied to, then you have to realize not to lie to a person. However, you don't have to be 100% honest neither. For a question like that, like, hey, um, how many people you slept with? If somebody was to ask me that, I'd be like, what does it matter how many people I've slept with? I'm not going to give you any kind of disease, and those are people in my past. If they really meant something to me, then I would be with them and not sitting here with you. And that's the motherfucking answer that I'm going to give you. So it's not a lie. I'm not telling you a lie. I'm not covering up for anything. It's just this is what the answer I'm going to give you because I'm not going to allow you to make me as a person feel fucking uncomfortable. I ain't about to let no motherfuckers make me feel uncomfortable. It don't matter who I fucked. Don't worry about that. However, it's the past, and we're going to have to move over this. And if you can't move over this and move past it, then maybe we got to look at things like who is the adult in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's a time and a place for everything, and you pregnant. And therefore, that means that don't allow anybody to disrupt your pregnancy and stress you the fuck out. Okay? Let that nigga know this is what it is. It is what the fuck it is, and this is how I feel about it. And on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. I gotta go. Stay diva and delicious. I will see you guys in a soon-to-come video.